Okay, in this problem, uh, we want to find two transfer functions. They are the transfer functions relating each of the displacements of the masses to the input force. So we want x1 of s over f of s. And the way we're going to find that one is first we're going to relate the displacement of the first mass to the displacement of the second mass and then knowing that intermediate transfer function we can relate finally the displacement of the second mass to the input force which is this second transfer function we're looking for anyway so this is going to be our strategy we can find the transfer function relating the second displacement to the force by using the total equivalent impedance of the system. If we recognize that through the one junctions we can show that the common velocities are or the derivatives of the displacements are s x1 of s and s x2 of s oops made a mistake here uh, this should have been these should have been x2 and over here at the leftmost one junction we should have the derivative of the first displacement or s x1 of s so now what our strategy is going to be is we're going to relate the first displacement to the second and then the second displacement to the force and that will give us both transfer functions that we seek so in order to do so we're first going to have to use the zero junction as a flow divider that will allow us to relate the first displacement to the second displacement to do so, however, we're going to need to find the equivalent impedance of everything here in the block. Well, since everything is attached at that one junction, then what we can do is we can simply sum the impedances to find the equivalent impedance of the three, the mass, the spring, and the damper at the one junction. That would give us an MS plus b plus k over s that would be the impedance of everything right here in this first block well that's not in a convenient form it would be better if everything were over a common denominator so we'll multiply the ms plus b by s and divide by s that would give us an ms squared plus bs plus k now everything over s having a common denominator so now we have the equivalent impedance or z1 which we can use in order to find the transfer function between the first and second displacements using the zero junction as a flow divider using the zero junction the flow divider we can find s x1 of s over s x2 of s for a flow divider it is the other impedance over the sum of the impedances and the other impedance if we look down at figure C the other impedance would be K over S so we would have K over S divided by the sum of the two impedances attached and we've already simplified the first or equivalent impedance Z1 that equivalent impedance is m s squared plus b s plus k all over s and the second impedance is k over s well all of the terms are in the numerator and denominator are divided by s and so after some simplification we have k divided by ms squared plus bs plus 2k 
this is the transfer function relating not just the velocities but also the displacements the respective displacements so now we've got the first part of our first transfer function the intermediate transfer function relating the first displacement to the second displacement in order to continue we're going to need to find the equivalent impedance of those impedances connected off the zero junction okay so we need to find the equivalent impedance of those two off the zero junction and when you have two impedances off a zero junction well the impedance off a zero junction are going to combine like resistors in parallel so for two impedances what this simplifies to is we multiply the two impedances and then divide by their sum so we have in ms squared plus bs plus uh, k over s times k over s divided by their sum so their sum being an m s squared plus k uh, plus b s plus k over s plus k over s now again we have terms in the numerator and the denominator that are over s i'm going to write this in a simplified form i'm going to factor out the remaining one over s and in the numerator i'm left with k times and ms squared plus bs plus k and in the denominator I'll have ms squared plus bs plus 2k so this is now the equivalent impedance I'll call this z2 uh, this equivalent impedance is everything that's in the green block Okay, it's the two impedances off the zero junction. Now, ultimately, to relate our, our second displacement to the input force, well, we need the total equivalent impedance of the system. So the total equivalent impedance of the system, okay, illustrated in figure D is everything in the pink block the total equivalent impedance of the system can be used to find the relationship between the input force and the velocity which is also related to through differentiation the displacement x1 of s Right, so differentiation in the time domain, recall, is equivalent to multiplying by s in the s domain. Hence, if we find the total equivalent impedance, that total impedance, z total, which is everything in the pink block, is going to be equal to the force, f of s, over the velocity, s, x, 2 of s. I keep rewriting this incorrectly. This should be x2. And now that means that if we can find the total equivalent impedance and uh, invert it, we could solve for x2 of s over f of s. It would be equal to 1 over s times the inverse of the total equivalent impedance. Now, to get the total equivalent impedance, we need to take the two remaining impedances off the one junction in figure D and add them up. So the total equivalent impedance is ms plus, and I've simplified it above, but it is a 1 over s times k times ms squared plus bs plus k all divided by the quantity 
ms squared plus bs plus 2k. Now this is not any convenient form because they don't have the two terms in the summation do not have a common denominator. So I need a common denominator. That means I'll cross multiply ms by the denominator of the second term. That would give me an ms squared times an ms squared plus bs plus 2k plus k times ms squared plus bs plus k all over now a common denominator and that denominator being that denominator being come on that denominator being s times an ms squared plus bs plus 2k now I have it in a form that can be readily inverted. Um, before I do that, however, I'm going to simplify, collect terms in S, and write them in descending order. So in my numerator of the total equivalent impedance, I will have m squared s to the fourth power plus an mbs cubed plus, well, when I take an ms squared times 2k, that'll give me a 2mks squared. But in the second term, I also have a k times ms squared. So in total, I'll have a 3mk times s squared. So from the first term in the summation and numerator, I have ms squared times 2k. No, I've already taken care of that. So what remains from the second term in the summation of the numerator is a k times bs and a k times k so that will give me a b k s and a k squared as my remaining terms in the numerator and in the denominator i still have the same terms which are s times ms squared plus bs plus 2k so i have a new form that is readily inverted and I have it in the form where I have the polynomials in the numerator and denominator in descending order of s. Solving for x2 over f. Remember that's 1 over s times the inverse of the total equivalent impedance. Well the inverse of the total equivalent impedance in the numerator I have s times ms squared plus bs plus 2k and in the denominator I have I'll write this out my denominator is m squared s to the fourth power plus an mbs cube plus a 3 m k s squared plus a b k s plus k squared there is the second transfer function that i seek the first transfer function well i will need to multiply this transfer function and and before i move on let's recognize here that well the s in the denominator cancels with the s in the numerator all right now i need to take this transfer function and i'm going to need to multiply it by the intermediate transfer function that i found earlier relating the two displacements okay i'll multiply this transfer function with my solution for x2 over f and I can find the first transfer function and if you pay close attention here if you look at the denominator of this intermediate transfer function relating the two displacements it is equal to the numerator of the transfer function relating the second displacement to the force and so when I multiply this transfer function by this 
the denominator here will cancel with the numerator here and I'll be left with k as my numerator for the first transfer function x1 over f and the denominator will remain the same.